Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Shimori Lockdown Series. We've had such phenomenal response and feedback over the last few weeks of doing this filming that we've decided to introduce our own full-time platform called uh, Shimori TV. So hit the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and we'll keep you up to date then with every little bit of content as it goes live. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm just moving along the river line over here, and as you can see, it's very, very dry in this riverbed over here. We have been going through a drought for the last few years in, in, the, in this part of the country, in the Eastern Cape, so a lot of our water has uh, shrunk down into the uh, more concentrated pools. For that reason, you'll see the hippos are now starting to move quite far distances, either for feeding or for moving back to water. So I'm going to carry on heading along this, uh, this river line and uh, see if we can find the hippos this morning. Beautiful clear evidence on this pathway over here. This is one of the game trails that the hippos have created as they're moving out of the water in the evenings out to their feeding grounds. They'll then spend the evening feeding and then in the morning they'll start moving back to the water. And what we've got over here is if you have a look carefully, you can see all these drag marks over here. This is the moustache hairs, the sensory hairs of a hippo as he's walking. Uh, and they've, they've come in contact with the ground every now and again. And you can see there are these beautiful clear toes from the hippo over here as he's come walking down uh, we obviously have those nice big feet and it's amazing the, the detail that you can get from uh, just looking at the ground and the signs that are left behind we've even got a tiny little bit of uh, spit that has dropped out of the mouth of the hippo a bit of saliva onto the ground um, and those types of things will help us to gauge when that was done looking at how old it is I'm going to walk a little bit more down the pathway and there's a lot more evidence which I'll show you guys Well, this is uh, incredibly fresh hippo dung over here. You can see the content of this is all grass. Uh, one step further than that, we can say this is a, a territorial male. Your bull hippos will, uh, as they're moving in and out of the water, come to these spots where they will mark their territory. And they will generally back up uh, next to a bush. And as they defecate, they, they, they slap their tail backwards and forwards and it sprays the dung over a much wider area. So we, we know we're very close. A uh, lot of sign, a lot of fresh activity. This reminds me of a folklore story about hippos and their diet. Do hippos eat fish? And the answer is no, they don't. They only eat grass. And, and a way of proving that, uh, to make the story very short, is that they, uh, they spray their dung every morning so that the creator can go through the, the dung and make sure there's no sneaky fish bones in there to prove that his diet is made up just of grass. So that's a nice, fresh uh, territorial marking from a hippo bull. So as we move closer and closer to the river, uh, you can see we're on one of these very, very well used hippo pathways. It's uh, two parallel lines next to one another, so we know it's made by hippos and used extensively by hippos. Other animals will use it, but this is, the hippos made this and they use it every night. This is their way of getting in and out of the river. So as we get closer to the river, the vegetation is getting a lot more dense. We, we definitely need to be alert. A lot of the time, especially this time of the year, when it's not so hot, the hippos will be sleeping out of the water and they'll be bedded up in some of this dense vegetation. So when you are walking like this, it can be quite, uh, quite tricky. You can bump into them quite easily. Uh, 
quite quickly because we were moving through this thick bush. I think uh, because the hippos are quite concentrated because of the drought, uh, they are a little bit on the edge, they are feeling a little bit more vulnerable and uh, obviously my, my primary intention is not to put any pressure on these guys. As you can see as we've sat here nice and quietly for a little bit so they've calmed down as well a whole bunch of them are starting to go back to sleep again so they're getting nice and relaxed these uh, these hippo pods are made up of territorial bulls and uh, that territorial bull then has a group of females and, uh, and their calves and when, uh, when you go into periods of of drought or there's a shortage of food or anything like that so competition increases and the ones that get affected the most are actually your young hippo bulls three-year-old four-year-old uh, hippo bulls like they're not old enough to have their own territories yet they can't compete against the big bulls and so they get pushed out of their territories and they become these nomadic guys who often get quite badly wounded in fighting but they can succumb to their wounds and die if you look at that one sticking his mouth out of the water, you can see those long sensory hairs. And it's those hairs that we managed to see on the tracks this morning on the pathway as we were walking down. Hippos have the unbelievable ability to, to actually sleep in water. They obviously can't breathe underwater, but they are able to sleep in water. As you can see now, most of them are sleeping. Every now and again, you'll see some of them go below water. As they go down automatically, their nostrils will close, their ears fold back, close, and they'll go down. And they, on average, will stay under for about a minute. They'll then come up again, breathe, the ears will shake, and close up again, and then under. And they can just do that on a natural cycle. It's quite, quite natural for them, quite comfortable. So these guys have relaxed down nicely. They're all sleeping again. I'm not gonna overstay my welcome. I think I'm pretty safe up here at the moment but uh, I don't want to put any pressure on these animals. So I'm going to move out 